Forum is a nonprofit established by Sir Richard Branson and other entrepreneurs whose main objective is to work with the private sector. We then identify sectors of the global economy where by changing business models or providing gaps in information, we can reduce carbon emissions while making it a good business opportunity. And the beauty about that is that in the world of today, 50% of carbon emissions can be reduced without any need for further legislation or regulation. All it demands is for business to engage. So basically not waiting for policymakers like those at COP17 to, to come up with some legally binding agreement, actually taking the step for businesses and launching that economically viable model. Let's focus in on the aviation industry currently accounting for 2 to 3% of global carbon emissions. Why has this been identified as your next sector to focus on? Well, the aviation operation is our third sector on which we're focusing. We're already doing something in the shipping industry where full 30% of carbon emissions can be reduced by efficiency on ships. We're already doing something on the built space environment because buildings are large emitters of carbon. But today here in Durban, we have launched our aviation's biofuels operation. On the one side, you have many aviation companies that are interested in beginning to buy these biofuels. On the other side, you have many companies that are producing them but without any vetting as to which ones are the best ones, which ones are the most promising. The Carbon War Room, together with Elsevier in a partnership, is now launching a website that will make fully transparent the qualities of these biofuels and who are the companies behind them, so that the aviation industry will be able to compare oranges with oranges, if I may use that expression, and come to their own conclusions on which biofuels they would like to purchase. The issue is not uh, from the demand side. The aviation industry, it is in their best interest to start using more uh, economically and environmentally friendly fuels. Is that correct? It is absolutely in their best interest to shift over to this type of fuels. And the majority of them want to do it. Here you have a market where 200 airlines of the 700 plus airlines existing in the world represent about 80% of the market. And you only have about 200 airports which sell 90% of fuels for airlines. So it's a very concentrated market in which we could really move very fast towards biofuels and that's where we come in to help. And this, of course, sets up the stage to create a similar websites and similar platforms in order to just assess for any other sector, renewable energy fuels. So this is only the beginning because we can do a lot in the energy space for different sectors of the global economy. As you well know, energy accounts for 70% of carbon emissions. If we tackle the energy, we tackle the carbon emissions. And in the meantime, we move forward while we wait for the politicians to get their act together. So the, the site is being launched today. Uh, just give us an idea of the type of uh, a progress you're likely to make in the next few months in terms of uh, the uh, signing on of uh, new renewable energy fuel producers and, and connecting them with, of course, the airlines. So we will have many small companies that already have promising technologies in biofuels that didn't have a platform on which they could showcase what they were doing, they are going to come on our website. On that website, the financial community will be able to look at them and determine if those are viable for an investment and therefore bringing them up to scale and greater opportunities of production. And you will have the airline industries that will now be able to compare one biofuel against the other and come to their own conclusions with respect of which they want to use. Mr. Figueres, before I let you go, of course, you have been leading in the environmental space for many years now. Costa Rica was one of the first countries to introduce a carbon tax. Just give us your views on COP17 so far. We're one week into COP17. What needs to be done in order to move the world forward and reduce emissions according to what science says we need to do to avoid the devastating impact of global warming? So as you well say, the scientific community has come down with a conclusive verdict that climate change is already happening and we have to move on it. What's required is for countries to come together in a cooperative and collaborative spirit and understand 
that the only real way to get out of the economic crisis in which we're living is to migrate to a low carbon economy. That will create the jobs, opportunities for entrepreneurship, and the well-being that we all aspire to. Governments need to act. There is no more time for just sitting down here and not getting it done. But Mr. Figueres, what are we likely to see on the table on Friday? Are we likely to see any formal roadmap towards this international, globally, uh, global binding agreement? You say Friday because Friday is the day that this is supposed to finish. What I would like to see is somebody that locks up the country delegations in this place, be it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, next month, and doesn't let them out until they reach an agreement.